All right, guys, this right here is my favorite rod that I build by Point Blank and Fuji. This is the seven foot three heavy. This is the one that I throw the ace on, the swim jig. This is the one that I would recommend most people, whoever wins the giveaway to get, but obviously I can make whatever you want to make, but this is a absolute beast if you like something in that seven foot three length for just kind of casting around and stuff like that. But this video right here is going to be all the submissions of actual videos that people put in for the rod giveaway. So we got some really, really cool ones. We couldn't use all of them, but we did get some, some really awesome ones. So this right here is the rod giveaway entries. And this is what my subscribers think. This is what the people think is a good fishing tip or life tip. So hope you enjoy the video. This is, as long as I don't bang it on the ceiling, the baddest rod I make right here. And we're going to announce the winner in the next video. We're going to announce the winner in the next video, which where I will read off all the tips that are, you know, written and emailed to me that didn't have a video with it. I will just read off all those tips, and after that one, we will announce the winner. So, that's it, guys. Hey, Kyle, what's your YouTube? Quick tip on a polymer knot. So when you get to this stage right here when it's looped over, all you have to do is just let it down and pull your tag in so your line is straight and not burned so you don't break off as much and your line doesn't look like that. That's a good tip for you. Hey Kyle and Hunter, uh, in your off time, take your wife to Mexico on vacation. That's my video. And then uh, you'll be ready for your fishing season next year. Yes. Good luck. What's up, everybody? My name is Logan Noble. I'm a member of the Kent State Bass Fishing Team. And my tip for you today, whether it's for bass fishing or for life, is two things. Number one, always have a purpose for what you're doing. Now, in the world of bass fishing, this means, you know, you're always trying to figure out what the bass are doing with every cast, with every presentation that you make. You're trying to improve trying to eliminate things or continue to build on whatever you have figured out already. Now in life, the same thing holds true, whether it's in your job, career, education, um, whatever it is. If you do everything with a purpose and you plan with your relationships and your, and your ties to people, then it's just going to give back to you. You're going to have uh, more opportunity to advance and to achieve more, and it's going to work out for the better. My second thing is to have a positive mindset when approaching anything. For bass fishing, it always helps to have confidence, to have a positive mindset that you're going to be able to catch fish, and to not worry about what other people are doing, what other, what other people are saying about you. Just go out there and do your best to have the best percentage chance to catch big bass and a lot of bass. In life, having a positive mindset means that you just go out there and you don't worry about other people, but you try to be the very best person that you can be yourself. And you go out there and strive for greatness uh, in everything you do. So those two things are my tips. Thank you guys for doing this opportunity, this giveaway, and this video. It's a great idea, and I hope everybody has happy holidays. Don't let no one dictate how your day gonna go. You are in control. God wakes me up every morning. I can take care of the rest. When the tough gets going, the going gets tough. Hey, what's up, Kyle? Coming to you from the beautiful St. John's River. Uh, my tip for you is a tackle tip for line storage. So when you put your line away, a lot of people use tape. A lot of people will use a rubber band that will eventually just dry out and rot. So what I use is nothing but the line itself. So what I use is a uni knot here. And I just tie it in midair. Try to keep the tag in kind of small. And what you want to do is just put it around the spool. From there with the tag end, just tighten it up. And it doesn't go anywhere. Very reliable. Um, I've kept spools for a long, long time and it's never moved. If you ever want to use it, just unwind it a little bit. And pull it through. Completely smooth. A lot of people are worried about fluorocarbon and that uni knot but I mean that tiny little tag in isn't gonna hurt you at all when you tie a knot it's gonna be at the bottom of your boat anyways so you ever have problems with 
you know, storing your line, especially the spools that don't have the little split on them. Definitely use that uni knot. Works 100% of the time. Thanks. Hey Kyle, how you doing? Don't mind this ugly mug. It got a lot of wind burn from fishing these cold wind blown banks. But uh, my life tip slash fishing tip is for us to catch better fish and healthier fish. I think we need to start by keeping our waters clean, picking up trash, not leaving trash. And um, when I get fishing, I bring a little bag with me and I pick up trash. And by myself, I made a pretty big difference where I fish at. And that's just me by myself. And if we could get more people to clean up trash, even though it's not theirs, it's going to help in the long run. It's going to be a better place for you and your children to fish. So keep our waters clean. That's my biggest life tip to you. All right, so what's up, guys? My name is Hunter Hamilton. I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And I just want to share a little tip with you all about some crankbait fishing. So around this time of year, I like to use a crankbait. So I prefer a Bill Lewis SP57 around rocks and sometimes laydowns, an MR6, and a Rapala DT6. So I found out that the SP57 sometimes will get a little bit more hung up around laydowns and everything when I'm bumping off with stuff. So what I'll do is I'll go to a longer build crankbait. And that longer bill will give you, so it kind of buries, like keeps the hook from bumping off of the stuff and getting hung up. Instead of this one, where I feel like the hook has a lot more room to get hung up with. And then sometimes whenever this crankbait, I keep getting hung up with this one, I'll go to even a longer bill. And just to show you, all these baits dive down to five to six foot. And down here in Louisiana, I don't really have to fish anywhere past six to eight foot. So... Just want to share a little tip with y'all. Thank y'all. What's happening, y'all? Jeff here from Marshallis Farms. The best fishing tip that I could give or that I know of would be to cast with intent. Since the mental aspect of bass fishing plays such a key role in being successful, you have to make each cast purposeful. You have to cast it that structure, cast it that brush pile, knowing that there should be a fish there. So don't just be lazy and just continually cast and cast and cast and cast without expecting anything. Cast with intent of catching a big fish. Thanks guys. Hello, my name is Dwayne Charles. I'm from Pennsylvania and I am a trout fisherman. I'm a good trout fisherman. I really enjoy that. But the last two or three years, I started bass fishing as well and I really enjoy it. Um, a tip that I would give for fishermen of all ages would be to have patience. Uh, it's something that will serve you well for finding the fish, finding out what they want to eat. I'm a bank fisherman, so I don't have the electronics in the boat to find them. There's nothing wrong with that. I just don't have access to that. But uh, So I do enjoy the bank fishing videos and the tips on how to find them and, and how to figure out what they want uh, but patience is just something that every fisherman can use um, it also transfers over into life uh, as far as patience with your spouse or significant other patience with your children your extended family it's just something that every person can use in their life and can always work at getting better at there isn't anyone that I know that has can say I have enough patience I don't need any more um, is something that we can always work at. The more you have, the better off of a person that you will be in life. It will serve you well as a virtue. Um, and I enjoy your channel, and I also enjoy all the videos. Uh, thank you. As you all know, this year has been extremely tough. Fishing has been tough. Employment has been tough. The pandemic, losing our loved ones. It's been a tough year. But you know what I'm thankful for? I'm thankful that I'm a fisherman. Fishing has taught me how to adjust and adapt my presentation to catch fish. Whether it's changing the color, slowing down the retrieve, or downsizing baits, fishing has taught me how to adjust and adapt to catch fish. In the same sense, in life, fishermen, listen up. We gotta learn how to adjust and adapt to get through this year. I know it's been a tough one, we got to put our heads down, loved on our loved ones, adjust, adapt, and move forward. I hope you guys have a wonderful new year. Bye-bye. 
Hey Kyle, what's up? Uh, I, I know that you like to fish chatterbaits, so I thought I'd do a chatterbait tip. Um, the main thing that I've noticed between chatterbaits is that there's a different connection type between the good ones and the bad ones. And I'm not saying that the chatterbait original is bad, but it's really just that connection type. And you can take a $5 chatterbait and turn it into a $17 chatterbait just by switching out the connection there with a decoy egg snap. Number two, that right there, when you start cranking that reel, it'll start chattering and you don't have to yank and yank and yank. Hope you like the tip. Thanks for all the videos. Good luck in 2021. What's going on everybody? Uh, out here on Lake Russell, getting ready to drop in for a little club derb. But real quick, Kyle, thanks for doing this. This is really cool, never seen this before. Everybody else, you need to smash that like button, hit the subscribe, because like I just said, where else have you seen somebody, a creator doing this, plus he's an Elite Series Pro. So, super cool. And you get to use his codes and get killer gear like this. But um, my tip today is gonna be jerk baits, getting them down a little bit lower. I literally, go from instead of doing suspend strips like some people do up here I go four six to eight size treble hooks and that gives me a slow fall depending which you're gonna have to play with it depending on what brand hooks you use but with vector hooks uh, tornado trebles this is what I have found it sinks and gets you down lower to those deeper suspended fish to where normal jerk baits aren't going to be able to reach. Um, like I said, this is what I found to work. Maybe it'll work for you guys. Go out there, give it a shot. And again, Kyle, appreciate you letting me do this. We'll see y'all in the next one.